Now let's finish up this problem set. There's two more problems. Uh, we've now got these algebra correspondences that the wedge product of one forms uh, corresponds to the cross product, if you think about it the right way. And then the wedge product of one form and a two form actually encodes the dot product. And we'll probably get back to that in a somewhat different way in a later video. Um, so real quick, very easy one. Let's fill in the right signs here. Uh, G and F, if they're one forms, they're going to anti-commute. And so this should be a minus. And that makes sense because we know that's what the curl does. So that's, it, to, for my money, that's an explanation of why the curl is anti-symmetric. What about this weird thing we're doing in one form and a two form wedging together, made out of vector fields in two different ways? Well, from this, the fact that it's f dot g, we can see that it doesn't matter which one's f and which one's g. So if the tilde in, is in front of the star and we just change the letters, that's just going to be plus, so there's no sign. And uh, we know that one form and a two form commute, because anything commutes with an even degree form. And so just switching the, the which one's the star and which one's the tilde doesn't change. So in fact, they're all the same. So all these are all the same, and then this one is a minus sign. OK, so what about this? OK, um, there's a problem in our book where it has a bunch of parts, or actually it's a diff bunch of different problems, where they ask you to derive various product rules for divgrad and curl. And most of them look like what you kind of would expect, like the gradient of a product looks exactly like it should. Um, the curl, you have to be a little bit more careful about exactly what it means to have the right kind of product. But you get, if you have a scalar multiple f cross f times uh, big F, the vector field f, you get something with the gradient of f, that's the only meaningful derivative we could take, and then the cross product. Yeah, that makes sense. Curl kind of feels like cross product sometimes. So this is plausible. Um, this one is downright weird, though. The divergence, supposedly, of a cross product turns into dot products with a curl and a minus sign. That just makes absolutely no sense. Um, you can do it out in coordinates and show that it's correct, if, even if you've never heard of forms. But the forms really, really explain this guy. Okay. Um, and so I think I'm actually going to do just this one on the video. Um, the other ones are really pretty similar. Um, and we're going to use these, all these translations and the tildes and the stars. We're not going to have to do anything out in coordinates anymore for this one. Okay. So let's look at this. Well, how do we get the forms into this at all? Do we have some equation that says div equals something to do with forms? Oh yeah, we put it in front of a dv. We promote it to be a three form. So we artificially say if we take this function that we're trying to analyze over here and we put it in, terms in front of dv to make it a three form, that's going to be useful because now that is d of the star, the two form version of f cross g. If you get confused with the stars and tildes, just you can think of it as, do I want a two-form version or a three-form version, or a, a one-form version here? Well, to take d of something and produce a three-form, it's got to be the two-form version of f cross g. Okay, now, oh, hey, wait a minute. We, we know that this two-form version of f cross g is just the wedge of the one-form versions of f and g, the tildes. And now we can get somewhere, because we've got d of a wedge product. Aha which is exactly what we want. We want to be able to use the, the um, wedge product uh, product rule. So that's going to be d of f tilde alone, and then wedge g tilde. And then let's see, this is a one form. So we commuting a d past a one form, so we get a minus sign, an odd form there. And then we're just going to get, um, actually, let me just copy this and move the d. f tilde, hey, come on, wedge d g tilde. OK, and that's really the heart of it. That's where, in particular, that's where the minus sign is going to come from. So the minus sign absolutely has to come from this, from anti-commutativity uh, concerns about the wedge. And that's what the minus sign is doing there. Now look at what ha what's happened. D was acting on a two form. But if I separate it out into its pieces, D is now acting on a one form. So instead of doing divergence, which is what div D does on a two form, it's going to do a curl, DF tilde is exactly the star of curl of f. And then that's wedge g tilde. So let's leave that for a second. Minus, OK, and then f tilde wedge. And then dg tilde 
It's going to be just the same thing here, but with a G. Cool. Okay. Now, ooh, now we use our other thing. Ooh, a tilde wedge star in any order is just going to be the curl of F here dot G minus, and then F, this is again a tilde and a star combined in whatever order, and that's just going to be, oh, I'll pick it up right from here, F dot curl G. So the cross and the dot are coming in, they're related because I'm changing the degree of one of these forms. This is um, a two form, this is a one form, and so that's where the wedge becomes a dot product. And the div became a curl because instead of taking D of the whole thing at once, the two form, I'm taking it of the one form components, one form pieces, and it's becoming a curl. So this is a, a great example of the power of differential forms to explain what the heck's going on why on earth is this happening? It's really a reflection of differential forms.